Happy Friday, I'm Connor Woodard and this is the Rookies Weekly Update for the last Friday of May. Today we're talking about new games, TV shows, movies, devices, AI tools, and this is the last weekly update before the 2023 Rookie Award submissions close forever. You've probably heard me say it before, if you're an entry level 3D artist, you've got to submit to the Rookie Awards. Even if it's just for the exposure to the judges, it's worth it. It's completely free and you only stand to gain. Create a profile and submit your art right now, because the next time you see my face, it will be too late. Adobe's Firefly integration is available in Photoshop beta. As a longtime Photoshop user, this seems like a natural development for the software. I'd like to add that since this tool does not scrape data sets blindly from the internet, but is using their own data set that they have the rights to use, this is a super cool and responsible use of AI tools. Unity has released a blog post about their AI beta program, which shows their excitement for the technology. They talk about lowering the barrier of entry for real-time 3D games, tools that allow creators to be much more productive, NPCs that come to life, diffusion content as a gameplay mechanism, and who knows what else. They briefly mentioned that their data sets will be produced in the creation and operation of real-time 3D experiences, so to me this doesn't seem like they'll be scraping, but we'll have to keep a watch on this as it progresses. Blockade Labs has released a Sketch to Skybox app, which while it looks insanely powerful and cool, I'm pretty sure this uses Stable Diffusion, which is scraping content from unconsenting and unknowing artists on the web. Stable Diffusion-based tools are so far the most powerful Powerful, but not built on the most solid ethical ground. I'm happy to be corrected about this if I'm wrong, but for now, I'll stick with Adobe Firefly. The next crazy powerful AI tool was released by the Max Planck Institute, MIT, Google, and other institutions, and it's a mind-blowing image editing software. These are the types of tools that I see the next generation of creatives using. Last AI thing, Mesh Diffusion has just come out, which is generative 3D models. They are nowhere near the quality of what a human artist can do yet. I also have no idea how this stuff is being made. What do you think of this new generation of tools? Are they an existential threat to our industry or careers? Outside of AI news, PlayStation announced a new handheld device for the PS5 that looks really cool. Bungie is making a new marathon game. If you didn't know, the original marathon game was released in 1994 and was very similar to the original Doom. Marathon set the groundwork for what Halo became. And as a lifelong Bungie fan, this is so exciting. Pixar is releasing their first episode project Win or Lose on Disney Plus in December. It will be eight episodes long about a kid's softball team named Pickles. Nimona is being released on Netflix June 30th. If you haven't heard of this project before, it's gone through many obstacles to actually be released. It was created by Blue Sky Studios before Disney acquired them, and Disney shut the project down when they closed Blue Sky. Annapurna Pictures, Animation from DNEG, and Netflix Distribution have saved the project, so it will see the light of day. I'm thrilled to see that all this hard work was not Wasted. There's been a pretty interesting opportunity posted to the 3D Texture Artist Group. Jaguar is growing their visualization team, and they need a bunch of Unreal Engine artists. It's so cool to see the games industry permeate so many others. Scanline is looking for surfacing artists for immediate start. Amir Sadbath's Games Jobs database is continuing to grow. Version 8.2 has been released. Did you know that it's not just a database of jobs? There's also a list of mentors for career advice, which I'm on. The Job Seekers Workbook, so you can get noticed by hiring managers and recruiters, and the career job pack, which has templates for resumes, cover letters, and a whole bunch of other things that will help you in your job search. Speaking of things that will help you in your job search, submit your work to the Rookie Awards. Look, this is the last time I'm going to bring it up, and I don't even bring it up because I work for the rookies. I bring it up because I know it's a good opportunity. It's not just the prizes, the awards, the judges, so those are good enough reasons to submit. It's you putting yourself in a position to succeed, taking actionable steps that increase your chance of getting your dream job in the industry. Look, I know times are really rough right now. They are. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I'm often telling artists to do two things. Make remarkable artwork and participate online. The Rookie Awards is a perfect way to do that. And please don't be skeptical about submitting your work because you don't know where it might lead. There are just too many ways that this could go right for you not to participate. And if you're looking to study at a creative media school, check out the Rookie's 2023 report on the best creative media schools. It's a free download and there's no sign up required. The featured rookie profile of the week is David Desensi for his Dune-inspired ornithopter scene. Really nice modeling, texturing, shading, lighting, presentation all around. High quality stuff.
The next featured artist is Shad Lee Bradbury and their team of over 300 volunteer artists that collaborated together to make the award-winning animated short film Run Toti Run. Bradbury is a Pixar animator who made the film over the span of five years as a love letter to their dog Toti. The film is beautifully animated, rendered in a watercolor style, and it's gonna make you feel things. And the next featured artist could be you. Keep making remarkable work, keep participating online, good luck in the Rookie Awards, and have a beautiful weekend.